turned down on my computer. And my, if it wanna work with me. It won't work with me. So, ah, it's been a while since the last story time stream, hasn't it? Peril. This is the full book cover that is above me. I changed my the scene up a bit to make it look better. Actually, maybe I should. Uh, make it fit here. with another story time stream. It has been a while, maybe I should actually. Okay. Mm. Bit. I should probably have done that before. Shame. But yeah. We have set the ambiance with the lighting because there's no light outside basically because it is full of clouds. <laughs> um it has been there's been heavy rain today and very strong winds. And that makes sure makes me a terrified Marev. <laughs> um, but yeah. Also, I have adopted you wearing the crown now. Thank you, Rambu. I mean, if he can rock it uh, while on stream or making videos when it is he has face cam on his streams, at least. Then I can obviously rock mine too, and I mean, I do rock it. I do actually rock it very much, and I love my hair. I have made a good decision with getting it cut, the short, and dyeing it. That was a good decision. But yeah. Oh, and about yesterday, uh, Bones lost track of time, so that is why they did not come. Um, yesterday, but I sent what I had drawn yesterday, and I like told them about uh, my lore behind the big behind the uh, drawings, <coughs> and they're coming tomorrow because they're off work tomorrow. They work today, and they've done it. They've done a dumb. They drove to work without their glasses, and I'm like, bay. Dude, I like made this joke. Uh, Asterix um, narrows my eyes at you, Asterix. This is how you're gonna look all day. This is what you're gonna look like all day. <laughs> um, but yeah, but they're staying safe. Even though they're not wearing their glasses and they drove to work. Remember your glasses if you do wear glasses when you drive, okay? Remember them. Remember them. There we go. Bit more centered. One sec! I accidentally uh, plugged out my USB. I really need that stationary computer. I really need that proper streaming computer with a few monitors so I won't accidentally knock it off. Knock my um my USB at, off and out and everything. 
It's like you've got a few times every stream, actually. Ugh. Anyway, um, yeah. Oh, and I started um, this internship today. Which is gonna last for four weeks, four days a week, four hours a day. Uh, and it's just cleaning. Um, but it's cleaning uh, at a nursery home, I think it's called. Like where old people go when they got no one to take care of them and all that. Yeah. And I've never been in one before, so that was something. But they're all super sweet up there. Um, obviously, I get that named all the time because I'm too much of a I was too much of a wimp to uh, say, "Hey, I actually go by Marib now," and I have since October. Or was it September? I changed it. I don't remember. <laughs> um. And I'm in the process of legally changing it, or getting the money to legally change it. But I was too much of a woman to do that, so... Well, constant that naming, but that's fine. I'm just cleaning. <laughs> um... And, yeah. Sorry. But yeah, I survived today! Yay! But well, there was a lot more people that I got to, like, be around than I am used to. So when I got home two hours later, I crashed. Well, I, I didn't go home two hours later, but, like, I got home. And then after I was home for two hours, I sort of crashed. I had no more energy, and I took a three-hour nap and woke up at five. just like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, that did me wonders. <laughs> that, that was really nice. I see why my sister do, did that a lot when she wasn't working. When she wasn't at work. When she's not awoke. I can't words right now. Remember your water! This bad boy's got 700 milliliters in it. Which is 200 milliliters more than the last bottle. And it doesn't rust. But my water doesn't keep as cold as long. Maybe I should start putting ice cubes in it. If we have some. Oh, so. Oh, that's a satisfying noise, ain't it? Oh, I love it. Anyway, we're gonna be reading today. First five chapters, as well as the prologue. And we're gonna read the back of it as well, first. Um, and we're going to recap the, um, the prophecy. That these, this arc is revolving around okay the back a question of loyalty peril has always been loyal first to queen scarlet even when she used peril's fatal fire scales to kill countless dragons in her violent skywing arena now peril is loyal to clay the only dragonette who has ever been her friend so when scarlet threatens jade mountain academy and everything clay cares about Carol sets off to find her former queen, stop her, and save the day, no matter what it takes. But on the way, Peril is offered a chance at a completely new life, free of her fire scales and all the pain they've brought her. All she has to do is decide where her loyalty really belongs, and whether her own scales might actually be worth saving. I totally did not just get chills but from just reading that. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Damn, huh? See, so yeah, I recap. Uh, Peril's got uh, fire scales. 
You can't get near them, you'll get burned. Unless you are a mudwing born from a blood red egg, that means you have fireproof scales. But yeah. And then we got the map of Peria. And then we got the guide to the dragons of Peria. Updated and edited by Starlight. Starlight. Stoplight of the Nightwings. And then we got like Jade Mountain Academy info. How the dragonettes coming to go there. And then we got the winglets before some dragonettes died. And then we got the recap of what the mud watch the dragons look like, what their abilities are, who the queens are, and what students they have. Jade Mountain Academy. And then we have the Jade Mountain of the Jade Mountain Prophecy that Moonwatcher um, delivered at the end of book six. Slash the beginning of book seven. This is book eight, by the way. The Jade Mountain Prophecy. Be wet. Oh yeah, I should probably do this. Hello. Echo! <laughs> the Jade Mountain Prophecy. Beware the darkness of dragons. Beware the stalker of dreams. Beware the talents of power and fire. Beware one who is not what she seems. Something is coming to shake the earth. Something is coming to scorch the ground. Jade Mountain will fall beneath thunder and ice. Thus, the lost city of night can be found. <coughs> and s oh, yeah. Um. Um, and yeah, the end of the last, um, of the last book, um, Winter Freed, uh, what was her name? Foeslayer. He, be he freed Foeslayer from the curse that she was put under 2,000 years ago. And... Now he and sh now she is on her way home to the actual um, <coughs> oh, to the actual city of night, Nightwing Kingdom, um, which is the lost city of night that the prophecy speaks of. And I'm thinking, beware one, beware the stalker of dreams. Uh, beware the stalker of dreams. See, and there, see, there is beware of dark, the darkness of dragons, beware the stalker of dreams. That makes you first think of dark stalker. However, stalker of dreams could also refer to Queen Scarlet because she's got a dream visitor and she kind of have been stalking dragons in their dreams. So that could also be her. Beware one who is not what she seems. I don't know who the prophecy is referring to there. Maybe Queen Ruby, Scarlet's daughter, who took over after she is after she died, but just disappeared. Something is coming to shake the earth and scorch all the ground. I still got. An I still don't have enough information, I think, to, like... Figure out what that is. But beware the talents of power and fire. Peril. 100%. I'm sure that is peril. Because she's, like... She's going to be split in this book between her loyalty to Queen Scarlet and to Clay. That's going to uh, be discussed big time it, it can go either way which is why they have to be careful of her be mindful of her um shake the earth and scorch the ground i'm not sure what adam's 
tails. Well, that is. But Jade Mountain will fall beneath thunder and ice. Ice wings, perhaps? Yes, ow. From the last book, we figure out that they have a super superiority complex and that they're assholes. And the only asshole. And the only ice wing that we know right now that isn't an asshole is Winter. He's a nice dragon. Kind dragon. But I guess beware one who is not what she seems. Could have been. Um. What's her name? Pyrite, the dragon that um, Hailstorm was turned into when he had uh, the necklace around him. Hmm. But I guess they could all it could also be talking about Darkstalker in the last section, like something is coming to us, shake the earth and scorch the ground. Unless the lost city of night can be found, I'm thinking that's where Darkstalker is. Maybe. Or, well, I'm thinking actually he's around, uh, somewhere around Jade Mountain. But. Uh. What's it called? If. But they can figure out where he is through the lost city. Like they can find clues in the lost city of night. So they can possibly find clues to where he's been sleeping for the last 2,000 years and been under that uh, curse thing. Um, so yeah. And then they find him, and if. And they can either. Like, re enchant the bracelet that's around him that's put him to sleep forever. Um, or they could free him, and they might figure out okay, he's not actually bad. And so, because we freed him, he's decided okay. Dragons are actually alright. Everyone's changed. This is good. I'm not gonna do anything bad. Um. So, it, that could be that. Sorry, I'm talking theory right now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Prologue. Okay, I, I, I was afraid that I didn't turn off the echo. I, it, I only have the echo effect because of my mic. I turn it on and off on the mic. Uh, I don't like have the smart boards, uh, but uh, I, I don't know what it's called. I can't remember what it's called. But I don't have that. Woo! One sec. Undertale, uh, Subnautica. I love the Subnautica. Um, soundtrack. Well, turn it down for me as well. <laughs> Larry, I'm a nerd, okay? Prologue. Seven years ago. No dragon was safe from the Sky Palace, but the ones in the most danger by far were the daughters of Queen Scarlet. Or was it now daughter of Singular? Ruby hadn't seen her sister Tourmaline in three days. 
not since the night they flew went flying together and high in this and high in the starlit sky glowing in the light of two of the moons Tourmaline had whispered that she was almost ready don't be an idiot you're only 10 and furthermore you'll never be ready ruby had whispered back she killed her mother plus all three of her sisters in 11 of hours there's no way to defeat her <laughs> she can't be queen forever tomaline said she has been queen forever ruby argued 24 years is a long time but not that long said tomaline queen isis was queen longer than her and look what happened to her are you planning to throw a scavenger at mother Ruby asked, because I'm sure she'd appreciate a snack before she killed you. It's always going to be like this, Tomaline hissed. She flicked clouds away with her dark orange wings. Until one of us challenges, challenges her and wins. You and I are the only ones left now. The only hope the Skywings have of a decent queen. Ruby, if I defeat her and become queen, we can get out of this war. Ruby was... Ruby wasn't so sure about that. She'd met Vern, and she suspected the Sandwing wouldn't let her allies go that easily. But it didn't matter. There was no way Tormalan could win a battle with their mother. <sighs> the prophecy will take care of the war. The prophecy will take care of the war. She argued, the brightest night is in four days. Right, Tomaline rolled her eyes. I'll just wait for a bunch of eggs that haven't even hatched yet to save us. Ruby, I don't want to wait for things to happen for me. I want to make them happen. I don't want to watch you die, Ruby growled. Her sister hovered in front of her for a moment. Stars glittered in her eyes, searching rubies. Just wondering if I want the throne for myself, Ruby thought. She thinks I'm trying to talk her out of it because I'm planning something. Well, I am that stupid. Well, don't worry, I won't do it yet, Tomaline promised. Another few months of training, maybe. I'm feeling really strong, though. I beat Vermillion in a fight the other day. Want to hear about it? Ruby had listened to the entire long play-by-play -play of each move Tomaline had made. And they'd spend an hour soaring around the peaks in the moonlight. And not once had Tomaline said anything about leaving the palace. But then she was gone. And the most unsettling thing was, no one had even mentioned her absence. The squadron was still there, training and hunting as though nothing odd had happened. There were no patrols out looking for her, no search parties scorching, scouring the woods, no, no missives flying out to the other queens to ask if they'd seen or, abduct, or abducted. Uh, why can't I talk right now? Or abducted the oldest Skywing princess just a quiet vanishing into the air. Ruby stood in the room she shared with her sister, studying the piles of blankets, the scrolls carelessly tossed aside, the gold-tasseled yellow curtains lapping at the window. There were no splatters of blood, no sign of a struggle. No note saying, oh, I popped off to one of the outposts for a few days. See you soon. Did Tourmaline change her mind and run away? Could she have gone to find the Talents of Peace? But Ruby knew that wasn't what had happened. The big sister wasn't the kind to ever run away. More significantly, Queen Scarlet would never let the peace movement get their claws on her daughter. She'd find them and destroy them all first. Heavy Talents were slowly squeezing Ruby's insides. Digging her claws in harder. One sec. Well. Digging their claws in harder every minute that Tourmaline was gone. Did she find out if 
she found out that Tomalai was planning to challenge her. I didn't know they were due. Princess Ruby! She jumped and whirled around. The guard in the doorway cleared his throat. <clears throat> the queen has requested your presence in the throne room, he said. Immediately. Requested? Ruby echoed. The expression on his face said quite clearly that he didn't approve of the question. Never let them see that you're terrified. That's what Tomaline said. Act like a queen so that one day they'll be cheering for you to slit a mother's throat. But now Tormelion was gone. And perhaps acting like a queen was exactly what of Governor Hilt. Thank you, Ruby said, inclining her head at the guard as she went past him. Her heartbeat drummed through her shoulders and out to her wingtips. The tunnel felt too small, as though she were the size of a thousand-year-old dragon instead of just a five-year-old dragonette. Whatever happened to Tourmaline? Am I next? Dragons huddled by the throne room entrance, whispering. They all straightened their heads and wings as she approached. Curiosity gleamed in their eyes. They must have known Tourmaline was missing. Even if no one would talk about it, they must have been wondering, like Ruby was, whether Queen Scarlet had decided to dispose of all her potential threatening heirs. But I'm not threatening! I'm not! Ruby ducked her head. Ruby ducked her long neck as she entered the room, blinking in the blaze of sunlight that reflected off the gold inlaid in the walls. It felt like walking into a fire into a funeral pyre. Oppressive heat and the smell of dragon fire radiating off the crowd of courtiers closed in around her scales. Queen Scarlet wouldn't kill her daughter in front of all these dragons, would she? Ah, Ruby! Queen's voice lilted over all the others, and the room fell silent. At last! Caught! Many of you don't know my daughter Ruby because she's been away in training. And even when she is here, she mostly sits in the cave like a sleepy bat. If you ever have seen her, she's probably had her nose in a scroll. But despite the fact that she's nothing like me, she is still somehow my daughter. Ouch! What a mother! There was a dutiful smothering of applause. Well, now everyone is here. Everyone important, I mean. I have such a thrilling announcement. Ruby, don't lie by the wall like a jittery centipede. Come stand by your brothers. I want you especially to see this. The crowd parted to let Ruby through their avid orange and amber eyes peeling off her scales as she slipped by. There was just enough space for her to fit between the vermilion and hawk, both of them towering over her. Her other two brothers were on Hawk's other side. All of Scarlet's children were here, except Tourmaline. Vermilion snorted and edged a step away from her, but Hawk gave her a friendly-ish nudge of acknowledgement. Ruby always got the feeling that ha Hawk was cheerfully being nice to her because he knew she'd be dead soon. He'd seen the rest of his sisters die on the Scarlet's course. Ruby suspected his good humor came from the security of knowing he could never have the throne, so he was so he wasn't worth killing. The mother glowed like a poisonous orange from the top of her throne, peering down at the dragons that packed the room. The sharp sparkle of diamonds above her eyes and along her wings seized the light. Ruby's breath caught in her throat at the sight of the hawking dragon at the queen's side. Burn, their sandwing ally, her face twisted in disgust and boredom. Everyone had, had been instructed to call her 
queen burn to her face, but Ruby found it hard to think of her that way. For one thing, she hadn't won the war yet. And for another, there was only one queen in Ruby's world, closing deadly talents around everything in it. On the other side of Queen Scarlet was a tall, oddly piled arrangement of black rocks that seemed to be smoking. Finally, Scarlet said, rolling her eyes as though, in as though including the rest of the court in her impatience with Ruby. A chuckle edged around the crowd. Get on with it. Burn snapped. Queen Scarlet flicked her tail and stretched her wings with deliberate languor. Ruby had had time to wonder if the thrilling announcement had anything to do with Tourmaline. I have thrillingly murdered my daughter. Why stop there? Who needs daughters anyway, right? You may have heard of a certain prophecy, Queen Scarlet said instead, mumbling about special dragon nets who will hatch on the brightest night and stop the war. And you may have noticed that the brightest night is the night. Isn't that terribly exciting? Tiny little heroes crawling out of their eggs any minute now. That is, unless something simply dreadful happens, of course. She cast a sidelong glance at Burn, smiling maliciously. What you all don't know is that someone tried to steal a skywing egg last night. A gasp ran around the room. I know, said Queen Scarlet. A nasty icewing thief who got all the way in here and actually escaped with an egg. The largest one in the hatchery as it happens. The air crackled as if it might burst into flames at any moment. Ruby tried to imagine life as a skywing raced outside the Sky Kingdom. The thief couldn't have been mm, planning to take it to the Ice Kingdom. A skywing would never survive there. So was he one of the Sons of Peace? Were they assembling the Dragonettes of the Prophecy? Was the Dragonettes was the Dragonette and that stolen egg going to save them all? Oh, don't worry. Her mother said, Queen Burn chased him down, killed him, and destroyed the egg. We don't particularly like tiny little hill heroes, after all. Especially ones who might try to tell us what to do. So, she clapped her front talons together suddenly, snapping the tension in the room like a bowstring. Just to be perfectly safe, Queen Burn and I had a marvelous idea. We're going to make sure there are there are no sky wings hatching on the brightest night. Not even one. Not even close. Bring them in, she called. Ruby watched in confusion as seven gods filed in, each of them carrying an egg. Red and orange shapes moved under the thin surface of the eggshells, and she could see cracks already spreading across three of them. Queen Scarlet narrowed her eyes. And there should be eight, she hissed. We'll find it, your majesty, said the tallest guard. I promise, she won't get far. It was a run to one anyhow. A skittering noise came from the pile of rocks beside the queen, and one of the stones trembled for a moment, then came tumbling down and bounced across the floor, rolling to a stop at Ruby's talons. Fine, said Queen Scarlet, putting on her annoyed, putting on her annoyed, but it's a celebration, so I'll just kill someone later, face. I have someone just wonderful I want to introduce to you all, and this seems like a perfect way to do it. Ooh, the suspense. A puff of impatience, a puff of impatient smoke snorted out of Burns' nostrils. Always a spectacle, she muttered. Can't just steal something efficiently and be done already. Queen Scarlet ignored her. She was busy removing rocks from the top of the pile, slowly taking off the roof of the makeshift structure. An 
Another scrabbling noise came from inside the rock. There's something in alive in there, Ruby thought. And then suddenly a little head popped over the edge of the rocks. Only a heartbeat away from the queen's talons, Scarlet jerked back, and Ruby was shocked to see something that looked like a flash of fear in her eyes. She craned her neck to see better. What could possibly scare Mother? She's not afraid of anything. It looked like an ordinary dragonette, about a year or maybe a year and a half old, with unusually bright coppery orange scales. But then the dragonette swirled her head, and her eyes met Ruby's. They were blue. The weirdest, creepiest blue Ruby had ever seen. Far beyond the color of the sky. Like someone had bundled up the sky and immersed it in the f and immersed it in fire until it burned from the inside. That's it, Ruby thought. Ruby thought. The dragonette looked like she was burning from the inside. Smoke was even rising from her scales. Over Ruby's head, Hog and Vermilion exchanged looks. Did you know about this? Hog growled softly under the hubbub of voices whispering all around them. I thought it was dead. It should be dead. Don't question the queen, Vermilion muttered back, keeping his eyes forward and his mouth, mouth tensely still. <coughs> an abomination, Hawk hissed. Skyrim law commands us to kill creatures like that at hatching. Ruby had a dim memory of now that something. Ruby had a dim memory now of something that had happened over a year ago. An egg hatching with twins inside, the mother trying to escape with both of them. The palace had been in an uproar for weeks, but Ruby only got tiny scraps of gossip. Usually through Tourmaline, if she was lucky. She thought they were all dead. The twins and the mother. Could this be the one with too much fire? The strange dragonette squeaked and tried to scramble up to the top of the rock wall, the tiny wings flapping, hopefully. Scarlet seized a long metal scepter propped beside her throne, jabbed the center of it into the dragonette's and jabbed the center of it into the dragonette's chest. Down, she snarled. The dragonette fell back with a yelp. As Scarlet withdrew the scepter, Ruby could see that the round tip of it had a bubbly melted spot where it had touched the dragonette's scales. A worrying molten metal smell joined the heat in the room. Your Majesty! said a squad rust-colored dragon near the front of the crowd. He was one of the oldest dragons in the palace and had served, served as an advisor to Ruby's grandmother when she was queen. Whenever he saw Ruby, he, he invariably made an odd clicking sound with his teeth, commenting on how peculiar, peculiarly long her neck was and told her that the secret of long life was eating a goat kidney every day. And yet, she could never remember his name. She and Tomaline called him Kidney Breath. Ahem, said Kidney Breath importantly. Waiting for the murmurs to die down and for everyone to look at him. Your Majesty, please assure us that this is not what it looks like. Queen Scarlet gave him a glittering, all teeth smile. Does it look like it has the most fabulously dangerous new toy? Wait, that wasn't right. Does it look like I have the most fabulously dangerous new toy? Because that's exactly what this is. She flourished one of her wings in the dragon net's direction. Behold, my new and future champion. The dragonette poked her head out again, regarding them all with those sinister blue eyes. She glanced up at Scarlet's wing overhead and reached for it, but the queen kept it well out of her grasp. Your Majesty is the wisest of all dragons, said Kidney Breath. Even your every thought is genius, and all your decisions are perfect in every way. But 
Are you sure this is safe? Keeping that uh, monster alive. She's not just any monster, Queen Scarlet said smugly. She's my monster, and she's so very useful. Hey, darling, show them what you can do. The queen plucked one of the eggs from the god's talons and passed it casually to the dragonette. At least, she made it look casual, but Ruby could see how carefully Scarlet was avoiding touching the dragonette's claws, and how quickly he and how quickly she snatched her talons back. The dragonette looked down at the egg, which was almost a quarter of her own size. Her expression was curious and a little delighted, as if no one had ever given her a toy before. And then small tremors began to run across the eggshell, and the translucent whiteness began to fade to grey, and the orange shape inside gave a shudder, and then turned black. Black as coal, black as that. Burned husks of trees. Black as dead, burned husks of trees. Before the whole egg went black and no one could see inside anymore. A hush fell over the room. Nobody spoke. Nobody could speak, Ruby thought. She felt as though she couldn't even breathe. Like, perhaps... It would be safer to never breathe again. The egg crumbled into a pile of ash in the dragonette's talons. The dragonette stared down at her claws with an unreadable expression. Was she surprised? Pleased with herself? Did she know that with one simple act, by merely holding an egg, she'd managed to terrify every dragon in the room? She tilted her head slightly to peer up at the queen, and in that moment, Ruby caught a glimpse of something familiar in those weird eyes. The dragonette with too much fire was worried that Scarlet would be angry with her. It was Byrne who finally broke the silence. Impressive, she growled. Now deal with the rest of them or let me smash them myself. Scarlet reached over with the scepter and knocked down the wall of rocks in the dragonette's way. Go touch the rest of the eggs, Peril, she ordered. Peril, Ruby thought. The monster has a name. Peril glanced down at the eggs, then down at her tail and then back at Queen Scarlet. She looked very small next to the two queens. But, she said, her voice swallowed by the hot air in the hush room. But I burned it. it. You are my champion, said Queen Scarlet coldly. You do as I tell you to. Carol hesitated for a moment, looking around at the wall of scales and wings and unfriendly, suspicious eyes around her. She stepped forward, and the guards holding their eggs all quickly placed them on the ground, stumbling out of her way. One by one, Peril stopped at each egg and laid her claws on it until the dragonette inside was dead. She could do that to anyone, Ruby realized. She can probably kill a full grown dragon just by touching him. She's the deadliest weapon Mother has ever found. A ripple of horror ricocheted through her scales. Is that what happened to Tourmaline? She couldn't unhook her gaze from the murderous dragonette. Is my sister now a pile of ashes somewhere? As Peril reached the last egg, Ruby finally tore her eyes free and lifted them toward the queen. Scarlet was watching Ruby with a satisfied, sinister look. Look that said, who would dare challenge me now? You, my dreaming daughter, go ahead and try. If you even think about it, you know. If you even think about it, now you know who is telling you find your throat in the middle of the night. 
because Talon's will find your throat in the middle of the night. She was right. No one could stop Scarlet now. Ruby would never be queen. Peril would always be there, the threat lurking behind the throne. The sm <clears throat> Sorry. The smoking scales that- Whoa! Okay, sorry. The smoking scales that lay in wait for any dragon who showed even a hint of ambition. So I won't, Ruby thought. I won't dream of the throne. I'll be obedient, loyal, agreeable. Anything she wants me to be. Anything that keeps me alive and as far away from that monster as I can get. You win, mother. The dragonette lifted her claws from the last smoking egg and turned to Queen Scarlet with a hungry look in her eyes. Ruby recognized that look too. Did he... Do you love me now? But look. Excellent! Said Queen Scarlet, flicking her tongue between her teeth. A thrilling demonstration. Everything I was hoping for. As you say, Queen Byrne. So much for that prophecy now, right? Peril, back to your place. I hope you know how to control your new dragon mother. Because she's not just a threat to me. The crowd of dragons surged back, struggling to stay out of Peril's path, as the dragonette walked slowly back to the little cage of rocks. This dragon could destroy the entire world. End of the prologue. And now we're on to part one of the book, which is called Scales of Fire. We gotta hydrate! Oh, I love that sound. Okay. This is going to be like a two hour and a half hour long stream, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how long the chapters are. I don't actually know how many chapters there are. I'm gonna check real quick actually, just to get a hands of the log on. Twenty-one chapters. I'm sorry, what? Okay, I'm thinking we take three chapters then. Now. I think I think we'll do that three chapters each dream instead of five. So there'll be six dreams. No, seven streams, sorry. Cause like that means the chapters are long because this book is, okay, the epilogue is like one and a bit page long. But like still, it's, it, these chapters must be long. I'm gonna check how long this chapter is actually. Which is easy because it starts from page one. Twelve and a bit, again. Twelve and a bit. I'm gonna check how long these chapters are, cause what? Thirteen and a half. Okay. Yeah, okay, these are longer. So, like... One sec. Gotta do some math. Okay, so, we 
be safe. Fourteen times one. Yeah, okay. So these chapters are uh, longer than the usual chapters than the other chapters have been in the other books. At least in the first arc, which was the first five books. Um, so... Two pages of stream, give or take. So it's about the same. Uh, these streams might be shorter than because three chapters a book instead of five. But in return, chapters are longer. And I don't want to be here for too long and bore you all to death. Um. Yeah. <coughs> Chapter 1 Deep in a cave in the Jade Mountain, the most dangerous dragon Imperia was hiding, which she was not particularly pleased about. <sighs> Just until the ruby's gone, Carol muttered, pacing. That's what he said. Hours ago. He said he'd come get me as soon as it was safe. Ha! As if I should be afraid of her. I'm not afraid of anyone. Three moons, it's been forever. How long does it take to collect a body? And why should she have to hide away? Ma told you what she wanted to know. Yes, she was banished from the Sky Kingdom, but Queen Ruby couldn't banish her from Jade Mountain, too. Clay had said it himself. This wasn't the Sky Palace. He said... He'd said you have every right to be here. And was that true? Did she actually have the right to be anywhere after everything she had done? But all she wanted was to be with Clay, near him, around him, breathing the same air and watching the same skies. I wasn't asking too much, and if it meant she wasn't hurting anyone anymore, wasn't that what everyone wanted? Maybe not. Maybe Queen Ruby wanted Peril to be miserable and alone. Well, Peril hissed a tendril of smoke and marched to the cave entrance, peering out. If, if any dragon tried to keep her away from Clay, she would melt off their head. Even if that dragon was the new Skywing Queen. Unless Clay told me not to, I guess. <laughs> Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Peril went back to circling the small cave, flicking her wings at the claustrophobic stone walls. There had been a moment, months ago, in the chaos of the Skywing transition, when Peril thought things were going to be different. After she'd helped Clay and the others escape from Scarlet's arena, she'd flown back to the palace only to find Queen Scarlet and Queen Byrne gone, and the whole tribe in a state of a panic. Who would be in charge now? What had happened to their invincible queen? The relief when Princess Ruby arrived and took over. Peril remembered it clearly, with a winch of pity for the idiotic hopeful form herself. With an idiotic pit. Trying up again. Peril remembered it clearly, and with a winch of pity for her idiotic, hopeful former self. Along with everyone else, she had thought. A new queen! Uh, one who isn't terrifying. Everything's going to change! It was true. Everything had changed. For the better, generally. For everyone but Peril. There had been no thank yous, no celebrations, or medals. Idiotic, hopeful for myself had hoped for them. Idiotic, hopeful for myself was very stupid. In fact, there hadn't been any acknowledgement at all that Peril had helped the Dragonettes of Destiny defeat Queen Scarlet. I mean, 
They did most of it, but I did help. Didn't anyone notice? Instead, Ruby's first act as queen had to had been to banish Peril from the Sky Kingdom. Peril could still hear her hissing. I never want to see you again. And she could still feel the strange falling vertigo it had given her, as if her wings had been sliced off. Until that moment, Ruby had always been not friendly exactly, but not hostile either. Mostly she'd been quiet. She'd stayed out of Peril's way, nodding politely in the halls or leaving the room when Peril came to talk to Scarlet. She'd never seemed very queenly, to be frank. So where did this imperious, decisive dragon come from? But why? Peril had asked, trying to ignore the expressions on the guards that surrounded Ruby. Why did they look so pleased? Because you're a murderer, Ruby replied, as if that should have been perfectly self-evident. But are we all murderers? Peril had thought. Didn't we all do terrible things because Queen Scarlet told us to? Can you find me one dragon who defied her? Why am I the only one getting punished for obedience? Then she'd look into Ruby's eyes and realize it was personal. Ruby actually hated her. Peril had never known that. And even now, she still wasn't sure why. Hadn't they both been loyal Skywing subjects? Hadn't they both always followed Queen Scarlet's orders? Couldn't Ruby of all dragons understand everything Peril had done? Leave now, Ruby had said. Or die, whichever. And how do you plan to make me? Peril had felt fiery rage swelling under her scales. I could kill you right now, as easily as breathing. I could kill everyone in this cave just by spreading my wings. She nearly had. She really, really wanted to. The only thing that stopped her was thinking of Clay. He's, he said he saw good in her. Which probably meant he didn't want her setting large groups of dragons on fire every time she got mad. He thought she could be more than Queen Scarlet's pet killer, and so for him, she would be. Well, she would try. It was hard, though. Dragons could be awful. Some of them really deserved to be set on fire. And she didn't like being told to sit in a cave for hours just because the sight of her might make Ruby angry. The Skywing Queen was on her way to Jade Mountain to collect the body of the student who died, Carnelian. So yes, she probably wouldn't be in a very good mood to begin with. Peril could understand that it would be easier for Clea and his friends if she stayed out of their way, so, Ruby, so that Ruby's visit would go as smoothly as possible. But why was it taking so long? Peril paced to the cave entrance again, peering out into the dimly lit tunnel. Farther along the tunnel, deeper in the mountain, the faint sound of splashing and laughter echoed from the underground lake. The Seawing students had decided the lake was their exclusive clubhouse, and were there all the time now. Peril was always careful to avoid them. She avoided all the students as much as she could. Everyone here was afraid of her, but no one was careful of her the way they'd been in the Sky Kingdom. Only the Skywings knew how to steer a wide path around her. The dragons in Scarlet's palace had been experts at avoiding peril. Wherever she'd gone, empty space opened up around her. Here, she had to be the cautious one. She was responsible for staying out of their way. Even though they were terrified of her, the other students kept forgetting she was there. But what if she bumped into one of them? What if her tail brushed someone's wing by accident? How would Clay look at her then? He said she deserved a second chance, but if she burned one of his students, she knew there wouldn't be a third. Peril 
Bill's claws twisted and clenched, thinking of all the dragonettes Kalei was protecting here. Did he love them more than her? He, he must. He, he should. Why wouldn't he? They were innocent symbols of the bright future he always talked about. None of them have murdered. Her mind shied away from the numbers. A whole lot of people. Dragons. But none of them had saved his life either. And his friends. It didn't matter. They still hated her. Those shining friends who stood between her and Clay as blue and green and gold flames. Flaring suspiciously whenever she so much as looked at him. Down the sand... Down on the sands of her stronghold, after she'd saved him, under all the eyes of all the tribes, Clay had said, Maybe peril is our winter fire. Until once, her real moment, she thought, Maybe I am. Maybe this makes up for everything I've done. Maybe by saving Clay, I've saved the world. Maybe everyone will forgive me now. Maybe everyone will lo love me now. But that had, wasn't what had happened. After the end of the war, Peril had searched for Queen Scarlet for months, all across the continent, and wherever she went, dragons fled screaming at the sight of her. Or they fainted, or they threw spears and rocks at her, along with anything else sharp and pointy, a sharp or pointy or heavy that they could get their talents on. Once, she'd been walloped in the face by a dead crocodile, flung from the depths of the mudwing swamps. It was strange to realize that things like that could hurt more on the inside of your scales than the outside. It was strange to realize that a dragon couldn't be hurt on the outside, could have so many ragged holes on the outside. There! Talons thumping on stone, the rough slither of a tail. Was it him? Peril nearly leaped into the corridor and came within a wing flicker of colliding with a dragon who definitely wasn't clay. A dark green sea wing dragonet. The dark green sea wing dragonet didn't scream or faint or stagger back in terror. He simply froze, slamming his eyes close as though danger would obligingly disappear the moment he couldn't see it anymore. What are you doing? Peril yelped, jumping away from him. Um, he said in a low, rumbly voice. Walking in the walls back to your cave? He risked opening one eye to peer at her. Well, that was very stupid of you, she snapped. He thought about one for a moment, then opened both eyes and regarded her peacefully. Peaceably. Oh, he said. Sorry. What a peculiar dragon. He seemed to have no fire about him at all. That wasn't a ceiling thing. Tsunami was a fireball that blazed up and down and sideways at everything that made him mad. Which was most things. And her sister, the little ceiling princess, at least from a distance, seemed to be a shower of bright orange sparks on the inside. And this ceiling on the other talon it was a puddle. A fireless puddle. Bubbling, not bubbling, blobbing quietly into the rocks in front of her, and not even trying to get away. You're peril, aren't you? He said. Queen Scarlet. He trailed off, perhaps realizing there was no good way to end that sentence. Champion, monster, notorious death monster! <laughs> Yes, she has a Queen Scarlet's notorious death monster. He made an odd hiccuping noise and ducked his head. Oh, okay, I'll just go then. What would Clay want her to do in this situation? Maybe I'll make some friends here, he'd said, in that oblivious, magical way he had of thinking that any dragon in the world might have open hearts like his. Mm, who are you? She asked. Mm, that came out more menacing than it sounded in my head. I, I mean, who are you? 
she tried, adding a sunny-ish, cheerful lilt to her voice. No, I say I'm so manic. I'm not being creepy, she added hastily. I'm not, like, putting on a murder list or anything. I don't have a murder list. Not a to be murder list, I mean. W wait, no, to be clear, I don't have any kind of murder list at all. Definitely, uh, 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 definitely out of the murdering business. Me. Maybe I should stop saying the word murder. Uh, that would be great, the ceiling said, if you wouldn't mind. I just did what I was told, she said in a rush. She couldn't remember another dragon standing still long enough to hear her say that. Not since Ruby had thrown her out of the sky palace. I was just doing what my queen told me to. Uh, isn't that what every everyone does? I can't help what I'm like and what she made me do. Can I? Maybe it was that he didn't look scared. He didn't look thrilled to be having this conversation, but he hadn't run screaming yet. His green-eyed gaze traveled thoughtfully along her smoking scales, shifted for a moment to his own talents, and then dropped to the ground. I guess, he said. Turtle. Harold puzzled over this for a moment. Was it some kind of seaman code? Was he calling her a turtle? Is that a good or a bad thing? Mm, oops. She tried out just to see what would happen. She squinted at her. Uh, I mean, my name is Turtle. Oh, she said. Right. H Hello. Thank you for not screaming or fainting or throwing a crocodile at me. <laughs> I thought about it, he said. I mean, not the crocodile, definitely not in the reptile trial throwing business, me. <sighs> Sorry, uh, now it was her turn to narrow her eyes at him. Was he making fun of her? Haha. Uh -huh. Tried friendly joke. Are those allowed? Why aren't you scared of me? She asked. I am, he said. I just. You're not the only dragon I know with dangerous powers. Really? She said. What did that mean? Who was he talking about? Bef but before he could answer, a roar billowed down through the corridors like a rolling smoke cloud. Turtle flared his wings, his green eyes wide. What was that? <sighs> Probably Queen Ruby, Harold said. Was Ruby yelling at Clay? Was Clay alright? Did he need her to come protect him? She glanced back at the row of fire globes leading uphill to the school. Maybe they just told her that I'm here. <coughs> Want to go find out? Turtle asked. Harold frowned at him. So I can go at Roronet face to face? That does sound more fun. I don't mean to go say hi, Turtle protested. I mean, I'm going to eavesdrop to see what's happening. So, do you want to come? Harold curled her wings in, severely tempted. Oh no, I shouldn't. Clay will be upset with me. He told me to wait here. He doesn't have to know, Turtle said with a shrug. That's kind of the point of being stealthy, and if he doesn't catch you, then you're not doing anything wrong, are you? That sounded true. That sounded very true. Really, I just wanted her to stay out of Ruby's way. So if she didn't let Ruby see her, that was basically the same thing, right? After all, he didn't specifically say you must hide in a cave for hours like an obedient snail. Stop for a moment. Think this through. And on the one talent, she was still pretty sure Clay wouldn't approve of this plan. On the other talent, it sounded a lot more appealing than sitting in a cave waiting to be released. On the third talent, why was this strange seawing offering to hang out with her? Did he have an agenda? Was it because if they got caught, she was sure to get in a lot more trouble than he would? Then again, on the fourth talent, shouldn't she say yes to the first friendly dragon she'd met at the school? 
Clay did want to make her to make friends. So in a way she was doing something he would approve of, right? Unless Clay secretly thought she was too dangerous for anyone to be friends with. He might think that. She kind of was. Her only friend before Clay had been killed by Queen Scarlet for selling Peril too much. Well, then maybe she needed more friends so that some of them could be expendable. If anything happened to Clay right now, it would be the end of all things. She would literally burn down the world. She couldn't even think about it. Or else the tunnel would soon be a rage of full, full, bleh, or else the tunnel would soon be full of rage smoke. But if she had Clay and Turtle as friends, and then Turtle got himself killed by Queen Scarlet or accidentally set on fire, well, then she'd survive, okay. Maybe she'd still have Clay? It occurred to her that this was a rather morbid chain of thought to be having about a new friend. Yes! She said decisively, making him jump. Let's go! You walk in thro front so I don't whack you uh, with my tail by accident. But don't move too slowly or I might accidentally step on you. She ducked into the cave again to let him by safely. Turtle had an I'm now sensing this was a terrible idea expression on his face, but he took the lead without arguing and managed to walk fast enough that Peril wasn't annoyed. The roar echoed from above it again. Together, more or less, Turtle and Peril headed straight for it. End of chapter one. Aww. Turtle is a nice dragon, okay? Hydration break, real quick. It doesn't register me uh, drinking. I, I can't tell if it's registering me drinking. The sound of me drinking water or not. So like, if you can hear me drink water and it annoys you, please let me know. Cause I don't want to annoy you guys even more than I already am. <laughs> <coughs> oh dear. <laughs> but yeah, Peril, that was a rather morbid train of thought to have about friends but then again she's never oh gassy maybe it's because of that pizza pizza I drank Ooh. and now the water is making me yawn anyway chapter 2 for the past week, Carnelian's body had been kept in a cave near the peak of Jade Mountain. According to Skywing tradition, their dead were offered to the sky for seven days before being burned. An old dragon named Osprey, though only one in the Skywing Palace who would speak with Peril voluntarily, had told Peril that this was to make sure the spirits could fly free and return to Skywings instead of coming back as any other kind of dragon. Oh, that's actually really interesting. This is it's a, it's really interesting to learn about um, the traditions of the different dragon tribes. It's really, really cool. That kind of talk always made Queen Scarlet roll her eyes, though. She let her tribe follow whatever rituals they cared about, but she was not much interested in what happened to dragons after they were dead. Peril had visited the body twice, at night when everyone else was asleep. She didn't remember ever meeting this fierce red dragonette in the Sky Kingdom, but then she didn't know most Skywings by name. Queen Scarlet didn't like it when Peril tried to talk to other dragons. To be honest, neither did the other dragons. So Peril had been. So Peril had seen the morning cave by the moonlight, the tall arch, the tall arch roof, the towering slender pillars of gray, pale gray rocks, all the windows and skylights that opened to the air. And she had seen the burnt dragon wrapped in white silk, as still and, and empty as any of the charred bodies Peril had been left 
Peril had left, and Scarlet's arena stands. But she hadn't seen the cave in the daytime before. She hadn't seen. She hadn't seen the sunlight pouring in, bright and gold, and backed with blue sky, or the wind rippling the silk, so it looked like Kanemi was breathing. Now it really looked like a place where a spirit could be set free. A place where a new Skywing might rise again. Unless it was scared off by the angry dragons gathered around the body anyhow. On the plus side, at least all the shouting meant no one could hear Turtle and Peril sneaking up the passage toward them. Turtle crouched behind a boulder near the cave entrance. Peril peeked in long enough to see at least a dozen Skywings crowding the chamber and decided to stay farther back, further back, keeping a few curves of the wall and several columns between her and the queen who hated her. I saw lies all over the story. Snarled a Skywing. Not Ruby, but didn't but Peril didn't recognize the voice. First you tell me you're harboring a violent, bloodthirsty criminal, and then you show us a dragonette who has died in exactly the way that creature kills. Oh, that's me, Peril realized. I'm the violent, bloodthirsty cre criminal. I'm there! I don't thirst for blood! If I need to fry someone to cinders, I will, but I'm not rampaging around killing dragons for fun. I haven't even killed anyone in months. Bloodthirsty indeed. It was a fire, Tsunami's voice interjected. I don't like Peril any more than you do, but I promise she didn't do this to Carnelian. Very supportive, thanks, Tsunami. The unfamiliar Skywing hissed with disbelief. What sounds more likely to you, he snarled, that Scarlet's pet monster has murdered a dragon loyal to Queen Ruby, or that some mudwing figured out how to set off a dragon flame bomb and accidentally killed our soldier instead of her supposed icewing target? I want to know where the mudwing is. Queen Ruby's voice was unreadable without her facial expression. Was that called fury or grief? or calm, decisive leadership? Peril had no idea. This queen was so different from the submissive daughter she'd played all of Peril's life. Peril couldn't figure out her out at all. <coughs> you don't seriously believe them? The other Skywing cried, his voice rising again. Look at Carnelian! Look at those burns! Here and here, these marks even look like Talon prints. Peril coil coiled into herself, remembering the weight of the dragonette she dragged out of the burning cave. Too late. Too late to save her. But if she had, if it had worked, if Carnelian were alive now, would Ruby have forgiven her? W would Clay have been proud of her? Would he have called her his wings of fire again? And would have it changed anything? Don't touch the body, Queen the queen said sharply. Peril, Peril, call, what? Peril pulled Carnelian out of the fire, Sunny said, her voice more subdued than usual. So, you will find Peril's prints on her, but it's because she was trying to save her. Multiple hostile snorts. The arguing Skywing clearly wasn't the only suspicious, or the only one suspicious of the true story. Tell me what you're doing to find and punish the mudwing who did this, said Queen Ruby. What is her name? Sora. That was clay! It, it felt like wings spreading inside her heart. Clay was speaking in his wonderful, warm voice. She's, she's my sister. It's so, so sad. 
Harold wanted to burst into the cave and wrap her wings around him. No, that would only hurt him more. What she should do instead was wrap her wings around the sky wings who were being mean to him. Then she could watch them burn between her claws. Now that was the kind of thought she probably shouldn't share with Clay. Your sister, said one of these other sky wings. This escape is looking more and more convenient, isn't it? Queen Mahin has agreed to meet with you, Sunny said mm, a little desperately. Here or at her palace, whichever you prefer. We can send a messenger to her right now. She wants she wants to help you find justice. We all do. Peril always thought of Clay's soul as a torch that never went out. Burning clear and true all night long. Sunny on the other talon was a blaze of warm sunlight. Can mind kind they gave a dragon headaches and made you want to scorch things because stop smiling already, the world is horrible, go away! Carol knew that, but this was bad. Sonny was the only one of Clay's friends who tried to be nice to Carol, and yet Carol still wanted to push her off a cliff on a daily basis. Sometimes she dreamed that she'd left Sonny in Scarlet's cage and run off with Clay, and at the end he'd turn to her and say, you're right, we don't need anyone else. Forget all that smile. Forget all the smiling sand wings and bright sea wings and beautiful rain wings we've ever known. But then, she supposed, it wouldn't be Clay. Her Clay. Who loved his friends so much he kept trying to die for them. That was a plan, by the way. That was never going to happen on Harold's watch. cut in suddenly. Someone is approaching from the north. Queen Mohin? Someone else asked. No, said the watcher. I see orange scales. She trailed off, and in the silence that followed, Harold felt an overwhelming wave of horror surge slowly in... inexorably? Surge slowly and inexorably toward them, and then crash over everyone listening. It's Queen Scarlet, Ruby whispered. You are right. She's still alive. I'm coming to kill you, I bet, Peril thought, since I wouldn't do it for her. Okay, so this part looks like flashback. This next part looks like a flashback. Okay. It was a night after Peril had freed Scarlet from Burns' weirdling tower. The two of them were huddled around a fire in the unfriendly wasteland between the Ice Kingdom and the Kingdom of Sand. Scarlet was pricking bits of reindeer out of her teeth, and Peril was trying not to stare at her queen's newly disfigured face. We'll go home tomorrow, Scarlet said. I'll figure out how to kill those prophecy brats from there. With or without you. You should know. Peril hesitated. What? Scarlet threw a hoof at her, whacking Peril hard just above the eyes. Just above the eyes. Don't mumble. I'm furious at you already. I cannot handle you being annoying as well as disobedient right now. Carol rubbed her forehead and tried to remember why she thought rescuing Scarlet was a good idea. Maybe she'd always known it was a bad idea, but she'd still felt as though it was her responsibility. Maybe she just needed Scarlet to stop slithering through her dreams, making every night even worse than the days of crocodile throwing and dragons, and dragons screaming at her. It's just that Ruby is queen now. Carol said, and the Skywings really love her. She added a little vindictively. Scarlet flapped one dismissive wing. I know about that. But Ruby will roll right over and hand back my throne. She's a good daughter, unlike some dragons I could mention. 
I don't think she will, Harold said. She's made a lot of changes already. She doesn't do what Baron wants her to do. She's pulled back all... She's pulled back on all the fronts of the war since destroying the Summer Palace. And if she's consolidating her power and gathering her warriors to defend the palace... As if she's consolidating her power and gathering her warriors to defend the palace and herself. Plus, she, um, she banished me. She's a lot scarier than I thought she was. A lot scarier than you think she is. Scarlet glowered at Peril, her yellow eyes full of flames. After a long moment, she said, That's what Burn thought, too. That if I tried to return, Gooby would defeat me. She threw her head she threw back her head and laughed a strange hollow cackle. The ruby of all dragons. She's a mouse. She's not, Peril said. Truthfully, Peril wasn't sure what Ruby was, but a part of her knew she was digging in her claws about it because she wanted to hurt Scarlet. She wanted to hurt her the way she'd been hurt, and she wanted to scare Scarlet away from the Sky Palace. True, if Scarlet returned to the Sky Palace, then Peril would, could too. She'd have a home again. But it wouldn't be worth it because then Kalea would be in danger. The minute Scarlet heard her army back, she'd go after him and Peril wouldn't be able to stop her. Scarlet unconsciously reached one talon toward her scarred face, but didn't touch it. You think Ruby would fight me? She asked. She couldn't win, not against me. But Peril could see it in her eyes. Scarlet knew what it was like to be afraid now. The venom attack had melted more than her scales. It had eaten away some of her confidence. The time she spent trapped in Burns Tower of Horrors probably hadn't helped either. Peril shrugged. I guess you'll find out. There was a pause. No, Scarlet said. I have a better idea. She barred her teeth at Peril. You return to the Sky Petals and kill her before I get there. I can't do that, Peril cried. I'm not even allowed in the Sky Palace. Ruby said she'd have me executed if I went back. She can't have you executed if you kill her first, Scarlet said. Well, I'm not going to kill her, Peril said. You can't make me. You can't make me kill anyone else for you. I'm not that kind of dragon anymore. Scarlet's eyes narrowed. Oh, really? You think you've changed so much? I know you. You like killing dragons. You've always liked it. It's one of the things I can stand about you. None of the simpering, moaning guilt another dragon might have. You were born to burn your enemies. And mine. Mostly mine. I don't have to be. Carol said stubbornly. Play says I can be whoever I want to be. She knew right away that mentioning him was a mistake. Oh, that mudwing. Scarlet snarled. He wouldn't like it if I killed Ruby. If I killed Queen Ruby, Carol said. He wouldn't like me at all if I did that. But... But I won't like you if you don't. Scarlet pointed out. Peril couldn't believe the stab of dismay that made her feel. Why did she still care after everything Scarlet had done to her? Why did she still feel suddenly horribly desperate to be Scarlet's favorite pet again? I don't care! Stop cheering! Um, a cat was left in my room.
He's the one who tried to bite off my thumb, by the way. You can't get up on the scratching tree because that's where my computer is. Because my desk is a mess. Just one more dragon, Scarlet Bird. Kill Ruby for me, and then you can go follow your aggravating mudwing. It's the least you could do after you wouldn't let me kill that sandwing spitball. Carol poked her claws into a scorched circle of grass under her talons. This could be a way to please Scarlet and perhaps save Clay as well. Could she bargain Ruby's life for Clay's? Would Scarlet promise to let him live? But for one thing... You're not going to get up there, are you? You're not gonna try and get up there, are you? Good. You gonna come up here again? Yes! Trust Scarlet to keep her word, and for another, Clay still wouldn't like it. Even if she only did it to protect him, she knew he'd be disappointed in her. The last time they'd seen each other, he'd been hopeful. He could see another possible future for her. She wanted that to. She wanted to be that dragon for him. No, she said. That's my final answer. Then you're useless to me, Scarlet hissed furiously. The next Scarlet, the next Scarlet morning was gone. The next morning, Scarlet was gone. Pearl had not been able to find her, and no one else had seen her for months, even in their dreams, until she tried to get an ice cream student to kill the dragonette for her. That was the end of that flashback, by the way. I was just lying there. Down there. <laughs> Still trying to make other dragons do her killing. So something had kept her scared. Maybe Peril's words, or maybe hearing what had happened to Burn and Blister. But if she was coming this way now, then she wasn't scared anymore. Perhaps her rage had finally surpassed her fear. 
Who was she looking for? Did she know Peril was here? I'll go face her, Ruby said, her voice clear and strong. No! cried one of the Skywings. We'll fight her off, all of us. That's right, said another. She's not a challenger. You don't have to face her alone. She's an enemy, said the third. And you're much, you're a much better queen than she was. We want you, not her. I agree, Clay said. The throne is yours now, and she can't have it back. We'll all fight beside you. A long pause. Harold stabbed at a crack in the rock wall beside her, scowling. She didn't like the sound of Clay acting all loyal and supportive to someone who wasn't her. It was her special old Clay voice. And that's the one he used when he told Peril she would always have a place at Jade Mountain and said things like, I want you to stay. He wasn't supposed to use it willy nilly on a dragon who hated her. Uh. Ruby cleared her throat. Thank you, she said. If that's how you all feel, then we'll fly out there together. Peril heard claws scraping on the rocks. She pictured the queen spinning toward the sky. A moment later, the cave echoed to, with the sound of flapping wings as they all took off. Two skywing queens who both dislike me quite a lot. I should hide, I should run, I should run and hide. But if, it, but if Scarlet was out there and Clay was flying toward her, Peril couldn't let him face her alone. Scully was still her responsibility. She darted into the cave, barreling past Turtle. Where are you going? He called. What happened to Stealth? I have to protect Clay, she called back, spreading her wings. She couldn't hear his answer over the wing beats as she shot through the through one of the skylights. It was Scarlet. Carol recognized the curve of her wings instantly, and she could see the dark scar on the side of her face, even from a distance. The former Skywing Queen was beating her way toward them, her whole body radiating fury and vengeance. Ruby and her soldiers were forming into a defensive wing to confront her. Carol spiraled up into the cloud and hovered just above and hovered above the mountain peak indecisively. Should she fly down to join the soldiers around Queen Ruby and Clay? What if her appearance sent them into panic or distracted them from fighting Scarlet? As long as Clay was not in immediate danger, maybe she should wait and see what happened before joining in. even there. Why was Scarlet even here? She could be planning to attack Jade Mountain all by herself. Could she? Maybe this had something to do with the students who'd gone looking for her. A group of four dragonettes had gone in search of Scarlet about a week ago, right after Carnelian died. Peril knew from Clay that they'd been in the rainforest with glory for a day, and then they'd flown away to find an ice wing that Scarlet supposedly had imprisoned somewhere. But no one knew if they'd found Scarlet, and Peril sort of expected that if they had, they'd all be dead. Is that why Scarlet was here? Had the Dragonettes done something to push her over the edge, from caution to rage? She felt a sudden compression of alarm in her chest. Scarlet was... No, this is not her thing. Okay. Scarlet was carrying something in her arms. It was too small to be a body, surely. Scarlet wheeled about in the air suddenly. Out of flaming distance. Out of flaming distance of the wall of Skywing soldiers facing her. Traitors! She shrieked. All of you, disloyal cowards! She lifted whatever she was holding and shook it at them. I destroy anyone who opposes me. I will have my vengeance, and I will get my throne back. This 
this is just one of the dragons I'll kill, and you'll all be next. She flung the object at one as hard as she could, then abruptly whirled around and flew away, her enormous wings eating up the distance with powerful strokes. One of the sky wings lunged forward to catch the missile. Carol couldn't hold back her curiosity. She swooped closer as the sky wing looked down at the thing in his talons, then turned, shuddering, to show it to Ruby and the others. Sunny began to scream as though her heart was being ripped out of her chest. Flay reached to catch her before she fell out of the sky. Skywing was holding the severed head of Queen Deloria of the Rain Wings. End of chapter two. What? Glory's not dead, surely. I'm sure she's not dead. Must be animus magic from uh, the scroll, the animus touched scroll. The, the scroll that holds all of Dark Stalker's animus magic. That must and that must be the Nightwing head that she was um, working with. That must be him. That must be his head. She must have put she must have ripped something out of the scroll, uh, a little piece of the scroll out and like put it in his mouth and like enchanted it to change to Glory's head. Cause surely she's not dead. Deathbringer would not have allowed that. She's not dead. Glory's not dead. She would have killed her on sight. Honestly. If Deathbringer hadn't before her, she wouldn't. She wouldn't be able to take Glory because she's not a. She's not just another Rainwing. Glory is a little fireball, a sassy, sarcastic fireball who will kill you. It's not Glory. I'm sure of it. Mutation blade break and. Glory's not dead. Okay. Glory's not dead, I'm sure. Chapter 3 Tsunami's roar should have. Tsunami's roar should have flattened the mountains and ripped holes in the sky. She shot after Queen Scarlet, a blue blur against the clouds. Go with her! Queen Glory shouted at her soldiers. She grabbed the head from the dazed Skywing who held it. All of you, go now! They obeyed in one glittering mass of red and orange, except for one who turned at the last minute to face Ruby. If we catch her, he said hesitantly, do you want to. Do you want us to. Yes, kill her, Ruby said. I don't mind who does it. He nodded and wheeled around to follow the others. Should I go with them? Peril wondered. Surely there were enough dragons chasing Scarlet Louder. What she really wanted to do was take care of Clay. Knowing how he was about his friends, Peril guessed with a stab of jealousy that she was that she was immediately ashamed of. He must be devastated. Would you be devastated if that was my head? Stop thinking about yourself, Peril. Worry about Clay. He was half carrying Sunny down to a flat shelf of grey rock that angled out of the mountain below them. Ruby glanced at the head and the her talons and then followed. So this would be awkward. But it was clearly an emergency. Ruby... 
so this would be awkward. But it was clearly an emergency. Ruby would just have to deal with Carol's presence, and if she didn't like it, it was her own fault for standing so close to Clay when he was clearly suffering and needed Carol. Carol dropped out of the sky, landing with a thump in front of Clay and Sunny. Sunny was sobbing too hard to notice her, and at first Clay didn't seem to, Clay didn't seem to see her either. His brown eyes stared blankly down at the little sandwing, as if his brain had been incinerated. It was only Ru so it was only Ruby who reacted immediately, recoiling with a haze of fury at the sight of Carol. What are you doing here? Ruby demanded. In my mountains! These are my friends, Carol said, lifting her chin. You can't make me stay away from my friends. Monsters don't have friends. Hissed Ruby. Carol gave Clay a sideways glance, waiting for him to say something like, She's not a monster, or we are her, we are her friends. He still wasn't lo even looking at her. How would you have killed Glory? Sunny cried. Glory's amazing and indestructible and his magical death spit. Plus, we've got to bring on a whole army of rain wings who would die for her. Clay, please, please tell me that's not her. Maybe it's a trick, Clay said, turning numbly toward the head of in Ruby's talents. didn't look like a trick to Peril. It was definitely the head of the Rainwind Queen. Peril remembered Glory clearly from her time in the Sky Palace, before she venomed Queen Scarlet. She also remembered her on the Sands of Burn stronghold, holding Clay down while Peril burned the snakebite venom. Hold it. <laughs> She also remembered her on the Sands of Burn stronghold, holding Clay down while while Peril burned out the snake by poison in his leg. Oh yeah, that was Scarlet, sorry. She was the one who ruined Scarlet's face, the one Scarlet hated the most. You'll be next, she thought, glancing at Ruby. And then, maybe me. Or maybe the other dragons from the prophecy. Was Clay on Scarlet's list? If she dared, if she came anywhere near him! Peril felt molten lava rippling under her scales and curled in her tail with a soft growl. Okay. Clay's big mud wing wings trembled as he tried to reach out and touch the severed head. If only she could do it for him. Then she could examine it and tell him the horrible truth. But she couldn't touch it at all or it would turn to charred black cinders in her claws. It looks like we need glory to me, said Ruby. I'm sorry for you both. Sunny broke down, covering her face with her talons and curling into a ball with her wings over her head. Clay closed his eyes and his head dropped. Can I see? Carol and Ruby both looked up and found Turtle flapping down from the sky. He landed and carefully took the head from Ruby, studying it from all sides. Who are you? Ruby asked. Did you know Queen Scott, Queen Glory? No, I never met her, he said. I'm one of the sons of Queen Gloral and a student here, but I feel like, I don't know, just there's something strange about this. It is weird, Peril agreed. Glory was probably the best guardian dragon in Pyria. How did Scarlet get to her? Why go for her first? Killing Ruby would make much more sense. But then she could have taken the whole Skywing army to attack the rainforest. That's Queen Glor Ruby to you, the red dragon snarled. And I'm not that easy to kill either, no matter who you are or what your claws can do. 
Carol glanced back at her. Turtle squinted and held the head up toward the light. Does she have something in her ear? He tilted it toward Ruby, enough so that Peril could see a flash of yellowy white tucked inside the dragon's ear. A message. <laughs> Ruby guessed, taking it back from him. More threats? With careful claws, Turtle reached into the ear ca canal and slid out a small rolled up scrap of paper. As he lifted it out, Glory's head began to move. I knew it! It's not. It is that Nightwing. That they blinded and everything in the ending of the last book. It is him. I knew it. Sorry. <clears throat> the scales started rippling as though they were flipping over from emerald green to brown. The snout widened and the brow f went flat and the venomous fangs slid into the gums and vanished. Ruby shrieked and dropped the head on the ground where it bounced and rolled to a stop near Peril's talons. She peered down into a face that was no that was now most definitely a oh a mudwing okay not third nightwing it was now definitely a mudwing and not glory at all what in the name of all the moons clay grabbed sunny and nearly lifted her off the ground as he turned to look at her what happened what happened he cried what happened to glory who is that ruby demanded not green glory at all after all said turtle this is magic an enchanted of some kind an enchantment of some kind he held up the unrolled scrap of paper he even brought it close to his nose to read it out loud enchant this piece of scroll so that whichever dragon wears it tucked inside his or her ear shall look exactly like the glory of the rain wings there was a long confused silence it's not glory sunny whispered exhaling play glory is still alive alive clay said his whole face glowed with relief but we have to warn her that scarlet death scarlet's definitely going after her he took a deep breath Sorry. He took a deep breath, his wings drifting down like falling leaves. I wonder who this was, he said softly, nodding at the head. Was Scarlet trying to puzzle to trick you? Turtle puzzled. But why? I mean, you would have figured out the truth sooner or later once you heard from Glory. No, Carol said. It wasn't about tricking them. She just wanted to scare them. That's her favorite kind of power. Ruby let out a hiss and Peril met her eyes. She saw it then. The new queen was scared of her mother. As scared of her as Peril was. But Peril caught a glimpse of something else. Something bitter and deep inside Ruby that had to do with Peril herself. She curled in her talents in. She'd been thinking of the ways Scarlet always terrified her. Not all the ways Scarlet had used her to terrify others. Ruby's dark red wings flapped open and closed. And like a rug briskly thrown over her body. Wait, she said, an enchantment. Doesn't that mean that Scarlet must have an animus? N no! Sunny said, stretching her neck uneasily. No, we'd all be dead already if that were true. Turtle pointed to the piece of paper and the mudwing said, But, uh, what else is this? Ruby w 
whipped around suddenly to Galera's peril. You must know. Is there an anonymous dragon working for her? Why should I know? Peril demanded. <laughs> ah, it would be so satisfying to just stumble this dragon's tail and watch it burst into flames. She don't tell me things? It was her... Weapon. Not my... Not her friend. You're her daughter. Why don't you know? No one can stop Anonymous, said Clay. Right? Except another Anonymous. He, gla he exchanged a glance with Sunny that looked aggravatingly stiff, stuffed with secrets. What was that? Do they know Anonymous? Why do they have secrets I don't know about? Doesn't Clay know he can tell me anything? Peril flicked her tail irritably and Ruby leaned away from her, even though her tail hadn't been anywhere near the queen's precious scales. I thought the Skywings didn't have any animus dragons. Turtle said, not hundreds of years, if ever. Not just Skywings, said Ruby. None of the tribes. Animus dragons are so rare. I don't know. I don't think there's been one in Peria in centuries. The next pause had an extremely strange awkwardness to it. Peril glanced from Clay to Turtle to Sunny and realized they all knew something she and Ruby didn't. What? Peril demanded. What is it? Um, my father... Sunny said quickly. Stone mover. He's an animus. The old nightwing who lives under this mountain? Turtle asked. Judging from his tone of surprise, that wasn't the secret he'd been thinking of. Peril wondered if she could threaten it out of him later. Wait, no. This was one of the things Clay had to remind her about sometimes. Apparently, friends didn't threaten to set each other on fire. Not very often, anyhow. Yes, Sunny admitted. He made the tunnels to lead, to lead from the rainforest to the Nightwing Island and the Kingdom of Sand. But he doesn't use his powers anymore. He might have to, Ruby said. If there's a new animus on the loose, working for Scarlet, and he's still the one who can stop her. Be another Nightwing? Turtle guessed. Someone who escaped the volcanic island and went to team up with Scarlet? Clay shuddered. That would be not great for us. I'm not afraid of any animus, Peril blurted. I bet I could stop him. Stop it. Him. Her. Whatever. I just have to sneak up on them and pow! And then pow! Bright Man said, Claws, a pile of cinders. No more creepy enchantments. Everybody cheers! Me. Everybody's just me, at least they told me I'm wonderful. <sighs> Lee didn't have his her wonderful face on though. He looked all troubled and worried instead. But it might not be a bad dragon, Sunny said. This animus could be someone's colorfish chick or forest into working for her. You shouldn't just kill them without knowing the whole story. This is definitely not me agreeing with her, Ruby said, flicking her tail at peril, but I think we absolutely should. And those dragons are dangerous. And more so the more more so the more they use their powers. According to our history, the Skywing tribe used to kill them the moment we figured out what they were. But Sunny looked aghast, as did Turtle. You mean when they were still dragonettes? Before they'd even done anything? Before they could do anything, Ruby said. That's our policy with all dragons who are too dangerous to live. She slid her narrowed eyes over to Peril, 
we had already figured out the subtext of this conversation. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Sunny said in a small voice. That's not fair. Turtle protested. Animal dragons can maybe do good things too. That's safe worrying about it until we ever know who she really. <coughs> Sorry. Let's say worrying about it until we know she really has one. Clay said, and who it is. We have enough else to worry about already. Like the rest of my winglets, Turtle said, lowering his head. Do you think Moon and the others are safe? Weren't they going after Turtle? No, not Turtle. Weren't they going after Scarlet? They were, but I don't know what's happened, Sunny said, pressing her claws together anxiously. I tried to dream visit King Kaju and Quigley last night, but couldn't get into either of their dreams. I haven't been able to since they left. <laughs> I hope they're all right. They probably are, Peril said, or else Khalid would have been throwing their heads at you. She thought that would be reassuring, but for some reason they made Sunny look even more ill. Horrible. Someone's coming back, Clay said, standing up and spreading his wings to catch the attention of the dragons in the sky. Just swooped down, spiraling gracefully until they spotted Peril. At which point they all started flapping like insane pigeons on fire, until they finally landed in a thumping row between her and Ruby. Don't come near our queen, one of them snarled. I wasn't planning on it, Peril snapped back. Do you actually think you could stop me if I was? Peril, Clay said softly, warningly. Ah! It wasn't fair that they could be rude and she couldn't get them on fire or even growl back at them. But Peril bit her tongue, sat back, folded her wings across her chest, making sure she took off as little space on the rock ledge as possibly as possible. Clay gave her a sweet, grateful smile, which almost made it okay. Ignore her, Ruby ordered her gods. What happened? We overtook the sea wing, but couldn't find Scarlet, said the tall orange dra soldier. The rest are still looking, but we wanted to come back and make sure you were guarded in case it was a trick. It was, in a way, said Ruby, nodding at the head. Someone has to catch Tsunami, said Sunny. We have to tell her it's not Glory. She, he said, Clay said. She was somebody, even if it's not Glory. He took a deep breath and picked up the head. Carol wished she could turn it to ashes. She didn't like the way the dead brown eyes were staring at her. Piles of ashes were much tidier and less horrifying than stray body parts. Wait. If we can figure out who she is and where she's from, Ruby said suddenly, it might be a clue about where Scarlet is hiding. You're right. Let's take her to Queen Mohin. Clay turned toward Ruby, winching as he said his winching as he said his weight on his injured leg. That's the best place to start. She nodded, tilting her diamond-shaped head toward the orange dragon. Go catch the sea wing and tell her to return. She ordered. My soldiers should split up. Half keep looking for Scarlet, and the other half return to me. We'll leave for Mohin's palace at midnight. All the Skywings whirled into the air. The orange soldier went north, while Queen Ruby and the other two swept south toward Jade Mountain. I'm going to try the Dream Visitor again, Sunny said to Clay. He reached over and twined his tail around hers, and Peril felt a stab of jealousy so fierce she was surprised flames didn't come shooting out of her eyeballs. They're alright. I'm sure they are. 
Clay, Clay said quietly to Sunny. She shook her head without answering and lifted off into the sky. Only Clay and Peril were left on the latch. At last. She gazed into his deep, warm brown eyes. So, Scarlet is pretty scary, huh? Oh, right. And Turtle. The sea wing gets closer to them, twitching his wings curiously. Peril tried giving him a significant look of the Go away, we're having a moment variety, but he doesn't seem to notice. Yes, 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 Clay said with a sigh. What kind of sound was that? Peril wondered. Was it an I wish I were alone with Peril sigh or a worried about my students sigh? Knowing Clay, it could also be a we're all out of goats and I really wanted one side. What are you going to do? She asked him. I should stay here and guard the academy, he said thoughtfully. But if Ruby agrees to leave enough guards to protect the students, I might go with her to see Queen Mohin. Peril didn't like that plan. She had a feeling she wouldn't be invited along on any diplomatic missions, especially any that involved going inside other queens' palaces and possibly incinerating their national treasure by accident or whatever. What about me? She asked. What should I do? He gave her a rueful smile that lit candles in her eyes, in her heart. What do we want to do, Peril? That's the whole point of being free from Scarlet, isn't it? The, what do you want me to do? She pressed. Peril, Clay said, I'm not going to have. I'm not going to be a new Scarlet for you. You get to make your own choices now. I am making my own choices, Peril thought grumpily. I'm choosing to do whatever you think I should do. Maybe she should figure out what he wanted from the clues. Sometimes when Queen Scarlet was really angry, she wouldn't speak to Peril for weeks, and then Peril had to figure out on her own what she was what she'd done wrong and how to fix it to make Queen Scarlet happy again. So what did Clay want? She studied him from horns to tail. He had turned to gaze back at Jane Mountain Mountain, his wings drooping heavily. All right, it was pretty obvious. He wanted his friends and his school to be safe. And the only way to do that was to get rid of Queen Scarlet forever. Peril inhaled a sharp breath. That was it. Clay would never say it out loud. He could never ask her for it directly. But what he really wanted her to do was find Queen Scarlet and kill her for him. She might be the only dragon in Imperia who could, especially if an animus was protecting Scarlet now. So, as much as she never, never wanted to see Scarlet again, and as much as the idea of leaving Clay to find her was heart-wrenching, that was what she was going to have to do. It's alright, Clay. She thought. You don't have to tell me. I know what you want, and I'll do it for you. I'll find Queen Scarlet, and I'll make sure she never, ever hurts you again. End of chapter three! The last chapter of the day. Because these chapters are longer! Just past two hours, so yeah. <gasps> this is called Cuddlefish! It's called Cuddlefish. Ah, that's adorable. <laughs> anyway, anyway, thank you. And then some Undertale, obviously. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for coming today. Um, listening to me read again for the first time in a few weeks. <laughs> Yikes! It's been a while. And I really, really enjoy reading. So if you do not like reading, just get out. Because 
that's what I do. I read and I draw right now. So yeah, and we'll have my lovely, wonderful, kind, beautiful partner with us tomorrow for another drawing stream. It's going to be angst again. Though it doesn't really seem very angsty right now. I may have also gotten another idea for a drawing because of like these circular archways that like look like a portal to another dimension that I've seen pictures of and I'm like fuck I need to draw that now like <laughs> ah too many ideas now that I suddenly you know now that I'm figuring out how to draw digitally like there was a cat hair like <laughs> oh yeah let's see is there anyone we can read bum, bum. um you know no there's nobody with a way so much for coming today love y'all <laughs> um yeah remember to hydrate do not dehydrate if you do i will come after you remember to treat others the way you want them to treat you just you know be kind overall don't be a dickhead um and yeah i shall see you guys tomorrow for another drawing stream And you get to hear my wonderful partner Bones. I love him so much. <laughs> We're going to like just be talking random. I'm going to like talk about the lore that I have uh, for uh, our gem characters uh, from just the two drawings I'm drawing right now. And then we're like going to talk about how they figured themselves out and everything. Like, self discovery journey. So, yeah. Hope to see you then. Good. <laughs>